I traveled the United States as part of the Israeli scouts delegation and there I was for the first time uh, um, aware to uh, the existence of other Jewish options. It's our goal that Israelis don't have to leave. They can experience it here. They can understand that their Jewish religious identity can be just as integral to their lives as their cultural identity. So the celebration of the holidays, the celebration of Shabbat, can be done in a meaningful, in a way that families can sit together, be together, in a way that is palatable to the modern Israeli today. Although we still uh, 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 talk about small numbers, the numbers are growing. Today we have in Israel 25 reform congregations from Nariya up in the north till to the Areva next to, to Elat. And I can say that in the last decade we actually doubled the number of our uh, uh, congregations and in our uh, strategic uh, plans we are going to double the number of our congregations in the next 15 years. Today you'll find 95% native Israelis coming to services, 95% of the parents who send their kids to our education system are native Israelis, people like you and me would like their kids to understand better what Judaism is all about. Well, I grew up in Kolon Shama. I was in the first class of Talibait Vagan. Um, I was also very active in the Reform Youth Movement. I was a Madricha in the Youth Movement. Um, and then in the Mechina program I was the first Madricha, I was the first council, counselor and I formed and started the, the volunteer program in the Mechina. We're part of the revolution. We are the pioneers. Being a Mechina participant is not a passing episode. Once you've done the Mechina, it will be with you for the rest of your life. And after you graduate from the Mechina, you realize that the responsibility lies on your shoulders. And the future, it sounds funny, but the future of Israeli society rests on the shoulders of the Mechinisti. We are actually the legal and political arm of the reform movement here, and our main goal is to find and get recognition of our movement as a viable stream of Judaism. We want to be recognized first as rabbis. We want our rabbis to be recognized just like all the other rabbis in Israel are recognized. They, can, they should be able to officiate in a wedding, in a funeral, they should perform bar mitzvot, they should be a religious leaders of this country. You know, the Minister of Religious Affairs once told me you know, when a million of you Reform Jews make Aliyah to Israel and immigrate to Israel, that's when we'll start talking. And I said, you know, when a million of us make Aliyah, you will not be the Minister of Religious Affairs. And what we're trying to do in the society of Israel to help make Israel a more democratic, pluralistic, and Jewish state. Israel is democracy. And and uh, basically the citizens of Israel uh, enjoy uh, most of the basic human rights and liberties. Yet unfortunately for historical and political reasons, when it comes to freedom of religion and conscience, Israel cannot set an example to the liberal Western world. Unfortunately, since the establishment of uh, this state, the government is ending a full monopoly over religious services to the end of the orthodox monopoly. Although, uh, uh, as I said, unfortunately we still suffer from discrimination, I can proudly say that we see the first hints of, of a change. And for example, just for example, I have here on, on the wall a letter we received from the Israeli government telling us that for the first time in the Israeli history the government is funding a, a, the building of four synagogues for the benefits of reform congregations a, around the country. One of the reasons to be an Israeli is to overcome uh, huge odds and to make sure that we dry the swamps. I think that just like my grandparents were pioneers in their time, I'm a pioneer in our time doing something extremely important for Israelis. We're giving Judaism back to Israelis. To Americans that are very upset about what's happening in Israel, can't understand it and have to battle all the time, they can't understand why and how you're doing it. 
keep on uh, helping these few people here in Israel that are battling, that are trying to go through the legal system, through the political system. Don't give up. Let's help. I will do my best. Others will do their share. And together we'll create a better Jewish state that we'll all be proud of. We are, as I said, at the beginning of a revolution in Israel. This is our chance to root ourselves here. If we are not doing it now, it will take us decades in order to, to introduce liberal and reform Judaism to the Israeli, Israeli public. It's now or in a way never. It is very important that Jewish Jews in the diaspora lend us a hand, give us a hand in making sure Israel looks like the dreams we've had for Israel and we share the dream. And we need to continue to build what Reform Judaism is, not simply in America, not simply in our homes, not simply in our own congregations, but to also recognize that the spirit that draws us nearer to God that lives in us is the same spirit that draws people closer to God who live in Israel. I thought the service, is, the service was very pretty. It was really a lot of fun to go because you really got to find out um, how their reform synagogue functions in Israel. Chef Nov and Ruth and Kimberly group. Yes. Okay, That's you're awesome. going with the Avnis. I get home a for Shabbat. Home. And we're having a Shabbat dinner and we're very excited to be in Israel. Oh, the hospitality was uh, fantastic. Uh, we were accepted with open arms and open hearts into the home. It's hard to understand from faraway places like the United States how significant and dramatic it is that this brand of Judaism has developed here. It's true, former North Americans brought Reform Judaism here, and there was a possibility that it wouldn't catch. But the fact is, it's spreading like wildfire. People are searching. People have needs. They need this alternative. Uh,